we got some uh, renders here. <laughs> another day, together, another man. render. Another day, another render. <laughs> welcome back to welcome back to render show live. Every all renders. Yeah. Another AutoCAD square. Oh yeah, we got another Kirk too. Hey, okay. Hello. So hello. it's another Kirk. Oh, and you took away the little thing in the corner so he doesn't have to stare at himself. Yeah. I'm in the flow state. Wow, now. that was a I'm nice. It's a nice move there you did for him there. Well, it's more casual, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These are executive decisions you're making over there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Apple iPhone 13 in product red appears in renders. Check out this unusual camera layout where are they going to put the camera who knows how are you going to make it seem new i don't know what if we put them in a diagonal pattern instead of up and down if we do that <laughs> then can we get your money uh this is a product red render which showcases a smaller notch for the upcoming iphone 13 it comes via leakster david kowalski also known as x leaks 7 he has teamed up with CoverPick2.it to share CAD-based renders of the product red iPhone 13. So obviously the current generation has a more traditional layout. You got a camera above, you got a camera below. Obvious, it's a pretty obvious setup. This is not obvious to do it in a di diagonal fashion here. Is this doing it for you guys? Kirk, no. you want to take it? Yeah, I'm going to say no. I don't see it as Big being no. a huge difference. I mean, Big they no. moved it over by Big 2 no. millimeters. Now, what if they can what if they can prove to you that there's some significant reason from a functionality standpoint for doing such a thing we could fit 40% larger sensor due to our new incredible diagonal layout. Okay. Now you're speaking my language. Okay. I was just thinking because of the, di the diagonal setup that if you swapped to the telephoto from the wide, it'd be like a different sort of perspective. You know how sometimes on a selfie camera, if they put it in the corner and you're taking a selfie, it, it kind of gets wonky mm. with the angle. Mm. I would think you'd run into that, but mm. I mean, if they can put a bigger sensor in it. They got a video down there as well. And uh, if you want to watch it spin around the render, that is. <laughs> so then you know it's real. Who doesn't? <laughs> it's like, there, now Ooh. it's real. It spins. Perfect. Ooh. Anyway, this is not, a, look, most people are fairly convinced at this point that it's, uh, this is what the next gen is going to look like. It is going to have this uh, shrunken notch. It's going to have uh, some sort of new camera layout. Uh, there's also some evidence that the Pro model will have substantially larger individual camera units. But this is this is what it is, you know. This is uh, we're living the render life, and people need to know apparently because it's always it's at the top of my feed. It's going to be at the top of lots of people's feeds. When it comes to iPhones, people want to know way in advance what's going on, mm -hmm. and uh, that's exactly what this is all about. Can I ask you guys? Uh, can I derail this and ask you guys an iPhone related question? Go ahead, derail. camera camera related. Derail. Well, you know how OnePlus did the Hasselblad. And Vivo did the Zeiss. Mm -hmm. And I heard Xiaomi wants to hit Canon with the collaboration for the camera. Mm. If you're the CEO of Apple and you're going to do a camera collab on like the I iPhone 13 Pro, yeah, who, who's left? Who are you looking to collab with? There's, a, there's actually one that we were talking about was uh, Samsung was looking at Olympus. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I read that too. And doing, trying to do some sensor shift technology. Apple will collab with no one ever. So you don't think there's They'll any make their own. Yeah, there's got there's no chance even though I'm not like they are always collabing based on the components inside the phone. They're just never right. going to put it on the you know they're never going to call it that. That was one of the things that was happening with the Apple car. Mm. They didn't want no collab action. There's no sub brand, there's no other brand. The closest they got I suppose was Beats. Letting the Beats brand live right. under the Apple umbrella, but never, I don't think the two words were ever connected. It wasn't like Beats by Apple at any point, mm -hmm. or it wasn't Apple Beats or anything like that. It yeah. was always still presented as an independent thing. This is, that's that branding, that's that clout, that's that status. Prestige. What about Leica? 
Well, Leica Huawei had Leica. Oh, that's right. It's yeah, yeah, cr- yeah. I mean, it's all it's crazy. You're running right. out of camera companies. There's none left. Yeah. Today's sponsor, Raycon Wireless Earbuds. Whether you're catching up on your favorite news podcast, I don't know, maybe you're listening, maybe you're listening to Lou later. It's quite possible, especially now that Kirk's on the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so Makes whether all the difference. Whether you're doing that or binging an audiobook. Or powering through your workout with a pumped up playlist. It's another reason Kirk's on the show. Oh, yeah. Because he knows all about pumped up playlists. Oh, yeah. Known to get pumped up. Always. Look at that. 24-hour battery life. Capsule charges the earbuds. Yeah, of course. The little container, you know. It's got some extra battery in there. IPX4 water and sweat resistant. Go ahead and sweat on it. Why don't you? Mm. Go ahead and have yourself a sweat. Yeah, no problem. Bluetooth 5.0 is in there. Of course, since it's a fully wireless design, you got no dangling wires or stems to get in your way. See, they say stems because also you'll see the wireless here, but I mean, famously with the stem, will Mm -hmm. you do? You're aware. Oh, yeah. So you don't have that here. It's a very, it's a compact little earpiece that's in there. Built to perform anywhere and anytime with water and sweat resistant construction. Enough battery life for six hours of playtime. Of course, not taking into consideration the charge case. And Raycon makes sound accessible, great sound accessible to everyone. With wireless earbuds starting at half the price of other premium audio brands. On top of that, Raycon is offering 15% off all of their products. For Lou Later listeners, all you got to do is go to buyraycon.com slash Lou Later. That's it. 15% off your entire order. Feel free to grab a pair and a spare. That's 15% off at buyraycon.com slash Lou Later. Buyraycon.com slash Lou Later. Or click the link down in the description. If that's easier for you, don't forget the slash Lou Later. All right, speaking of renders, since we're the render show, welcome back to Render Later. This is the iPhone 13 VR edition. Whoa. Subtext, take my money. (laughs) I mean, I'm interested. That take my money meme has hung in there, hasn't it? Yeah, the fry meme. It's hung in there. That's got to be 10 years old. It's almost like the meme is almost bigger than the show at that point. When you said fry, what Futurama. Yeah. Damn. I guess the other dude, Bender. I remember yeah. some of these things. Billion years Their ago. Names. <laughs> that's, a, yeah, that's the extent of it. I don't know. Do you have to, didn't you have a scientist dude the as well? Oh, man. Uh, yeah. Dr. <laughs> Professor... <clears throat> for, uh, I don't know. Oh boy, we're in the weeds here. So this uh, this little thing it looks very uh, Xiaomi inspired with the uh, it looks like a display on the back, four camera modules, and then a headset to match. Uh, I think did it receive an O oh baby from one of you or mm-hmm. okay? So obviously it's uh, looking somewhat exciting. This is this is not based on schematics or rumored specifications of anything this is just strictly dreaming which is fine Mm. the source is concepts iphone and they've also got a video to show it off uh check it out courtesy of youtube channel concepts iphone and creator antonio de rosa a mixed reality headset to go alongside this uh very unlikely impossible iphone 13 i don't know maybe one day companies embrace this rear-facing display but seems unlikely i still haven't even checked it out on the xiaomi one supposedly it's somewhere well that phone oh, yeah i don't know you told me it was like in stuck in customs or something yeah unfortunately still is oh is it okay so one day i'll check out the screen on the back on the no latest way. device but Will it happen in an iPhone? Uh, I'm not betting on it. Cool. I'm not betting on it. I like this guy's videos because he makes them look like a uh, like a like an Apple commercial. Like he does the text the right way, mm. but they're they're a bit aggressive with the camera moves. But I kind of like it. Mm. I like that he's trying it and doing it. And mm. Dream. And I like that he's dreaming. I think that's him in the picture right there. Is it? Wow. Yeah. He just gave himself a shout out right there. <laughs> a bit cheeky. <laughs> yeah, it is. Ever since we talked about cheeky. Me and you, now oh, yeah. that's your go-to. Yeah. You're Mr. Cheeky over there. Yeah. Uh, all right, how about this? A real thing, not a render, a video clip 
of a third generation Apple Pencil. This is the most riveting content you are mm. going to see this entire year. Ooh. You're going to click on this little video and be riveted. Check this out, this caliber right here. Kirk, you wish you could make a video like that. Oh, wow, that's very <laughs> vertical, that video. <laughs> <laughs> what ratio is that? Is it replaying? It is, right? Oh, that's a cinematic yeah. mask. Four seconds. Okay, it's four second video. Willie, do do me a favor. Just this is just describe this video for people, please. So it's vertical, um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's showing the Apple Pencil in horizontal, pretty much. <laughs> so you don't see anything. You just see the side of the pencil, and it could it's be very a, zoomed in. It could be a straw. It could be a boba tea straw. Sure, yeah. All right, let me tell you what the key characteristics are here, all right? Here's the key. It's glossy, the finish. Now, the last Apple Pencil, not glossy, matte finish. Okay. The first Apple Pencil, glossy, but no flat edge. So this is merging two different, one of each. It's a little bit of Apple Pencil 1 and a little bit of Apple Pencil pencil too uh, of course the flat edge is significant because that's how you can slap it onto your ipad products uh -huh. just like the last generation we've been curious exactly what other improvements we're going to see here what the reason is for a new generation and why you would go back to a glossy finish so i'm gonna go go ahead here and ask you guys to speculate you had the matte finish flat edge on number two why do you go back to glossy well, I know if you get a Mac guitar, because I used to sell the guitars up there, and if you get a Mac guitar, it's a big no-no because <laughs> your hand is rubbing on it all day and it's going to turn glossy. It's going to be grimy. And you're going to see the dirt. So I'm assuming a pencil is going to be the same thing. If you get a matte pencil, your fingers are going to be always sort of rubbing it and then the matte turns into gloss and it looks terrible. Hmm. You have a half matte, half like glossed thing. It looks not so that great. It did not happen to mine. No. And I would say that with white... It's mm. less of a factor. Mm. What you're talking about. I do know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I have played a guitar. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah, it was glossy. Wow. Yeah. Well, after you were finished. It was, it was a glossy. Mexican, a Mexican strat. Oh, I have one. Yeah. What Good color? Night. White. White. Oh, white yeah. as well. Interesting. White, white humbucker. White single single humbucker. Just mm. like in Wayne's World, I believe. Wow. It's the Wayne's World guitar. Oh, that's the one he was like worshiping. Actually, no, that one had a rosewood, and mine has a, a maple. Anyway, but yeah, yeah, nice. Wow, guitar. cool. What did you play on it? What do you mean? What did I play? What tunes? Um, any licks? Any riffs? You know what? It was at the time I was doing mostly hip hop music, so I was using it in such a in like a production fashion where it would be just an extra instrument, mm. like just a just a. I would lay out a beat or something and then just pick up the guitar if I wanted to kind of improvise a little bit. You remember that song from He Got Game? There okay, was a, there yeah. was a title track yeah, to that yeah, movie, yeah, 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 and there was a really... Wait, but that was sampled. Yeah, but it was a nice guitar lick yeah. using a hip-hop song, and I yeah. thought it was, was That was sampled from a famous time. track. Uh, oof. It was Public Enemy. It was a song. You talking about the title track? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It was Public Enemy. And the music video has I like how dude Willie do right. He get playing game. the guitar. He get, <laughs> get, get, he get game. <laughs> he get game. Yeah, I mean, you can't play it, but it was Public Enemy, but it was a sample of a super famous song. Oh, and he's playing with the volume knob. Willie really do, you can't play it right now. Anyway, it was a great it was a great use of guitar in a hip-hop yeah. track. Yeah, it's, that was a that was kind of my thing. I mean, obviously I played, I could play, you know, the typical kid th stuff, like prior to that, because I had that guitar for a while. Your typical smoke on the water, uh, smoke on the water. But I was actually even more in my day. I wanted to learn popular music at the time, so like Green Day and mm -hmm. and uh, Brain Stew, Nirvana, Weezer, Weezer. I don't know if I played any <laughs> no. Weezer, but no. yeah. And then just your own goofy stuff. So. Okay. Anyway, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the reason for the glossy thing is. I, I presume that there's something to do with the finish there that uh, they that they figured out. I mean, they're Apple. They they probably they saw it all happen. I mean, they got however many hundreds of thousands, millions of units out in the public, and uh, 
if there was some type of an issue, maybe that could, could cause them to go back to the older finish. People can leave a comment. Maybe people who have used their pencil more than mine and they have seen some sort of durability issue with it. Maybe they just think glossy looks better after it's all said and done. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. But uh, this, by the way, comes via iLeaker, spotted by 9 to 5 Mac and then read by us on Mac Rumors. So yes. people like that last time we reported on a report, yeah. which was reporting on a reporter a from a previous report. <laughs> And, uh, well, that's how it goes on the internet, isn't it? Yeah. Here's an exclusive. Samsung's Trifold tablet, the Galaxy Z Fold Tab, Q1 2022. Okay. A Trifold. You know what that is? That's a pamphlet. That's the Samsung pamphlet. Mm. You, ever, you ever had a pamphlet? Did I own one? No, like did someone <laughs> hand you one? You know, like it could be like a menu or it could be like. Yes, yes, many times. Many times. Yeah. It's kind of tricky when you got to mail something and fold it in that pamphlet style. Yeah, to get it, can it all get equal. get hectic. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I hear you. It's easier to get Samsung to do it for you. Much yeah. easier. With a trifold Z-fold tab. Well, this is interesting to me because uh, I've been looking at the previous folding products from Samsung kind of as tablets anyway because I always unfolded it. I basically never use it, use it folded up. And so then you start to think, well, okay, if it gets used most of the time as a tablet, then the folded portion is only for transport. At least that's what's for me. It was just to get it in the pocket. But then you think, okay, well, if it's only for transport, then why does the scale have to stop there? Mm -hmm. But when it's folded up, I mean, it's large in your pocket, but it's not as large as it could be. So it, 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 once you get to try fold in there, and if you can make it a little bit thinner... I guess it's going to have to... Is it too it, much work, though? To unfold it? Well, yeah. it's not trying... In this case, it's not trying to be your phone. Right. So... You're not going to take it out every single time. It's just going to be a tablet that travels a bit better. I see. Think about the opportunity, you know, with the Fold and with the flip phones, like the Motorola Razr. Think about, like, how satisfying it is to hang up on someone or, like, you close, you know, the meeting is over and you get to slap it shut. Now you get two with that Fold, the Tri-Fold. Two you slaps. Could, you could be dramatic with it. Mm -hmm. Gizmo China has partnered with tipster Yogesh to bring you... <laughs> what are you laughing about? What are you laughing about? It sounds like, it sounds like some sort of a um, production, like a hit movie coming out this summer. Uh, yeah, yeah. Epic leaking. Gizmo China <laughs> partnered with tipster Yogesh to bring you the fresh new leak. From the producers of The Last League. In a world. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, shout out Yogesh. Shout out Gizmo China. They claim it's not going to be for a bit. Uh, Q1 2022. So we'll have to wait and see. But I'm all for larger folding devices. Uh, yeah, well, I say why not. Mm -hmm. It's less of a why and more of a why not. If you're going to use a tablet... It can be a little unwieldy, you know. You got to take a bag now. It's either under your arm or you're taking a bag. Mm -hmm. I want a tablet in my pocket. Yeah. I got big pockets. Yeah. I can deal, you know. Yeah, you'll figure it out. Yeah. The thing I love about this segment, like we kind of were talking about it yesterday, we were talking about Sony. And, and even with LG exiting the cell phone thing, the thing that I like about this segment is that people are trying. They're always trying. They're so, so enthusiastic and optimistic yeah. to try new things and exciting things. There's always something yeah. new coming out. Well, it's not like that in other. No, you can't blame them. Yeah, it's not like that in other segments. Like in the automobile segment, maybe they have to do a lot of R&D and, you know, marketing and stuff like that. I, know, I never saw Will this comfortable before in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Friday. He's it's looking very casual. casual like, maybe say. it's the chocolate milk. He had a chocolate milk before. <laughs> Yeah. Hepped <laughs> up on sugar, just like a kid. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of show is this? This is supposed to be a news show. Yeah, I Come don't know. On. I don't know why that got you going so much, but Kirk's right. Uh they gotta keep you gotta put out something. You gotta put out lots of things constantly. It's a similar fashion on a way, way lower scale to us and, and the feeling if you don't post something, you don't shoot something. It's like, what are we doing then? Mm -hmm. What are we doing around here? Mm -hmm. you got to be like that next output. And if you're at Samsung, 
that next output, it better be there. And it better be something that you think has a shot at selling. <laughs> That's a, yeah. how it works. And so yeah. you you start folding things. Next thing you got to try fold <laughs> and, and all of a sudden, bingo, there you go. Yeah. Let her rip and see how it goes. And, and, and one of those companies that was trying to do that, but uh, recently had to pack it in, LG smartphones. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an interesting story about a collector of LG smartphones. Mm. The quote here is phone maniac who apparently will not give up his LG smartphones. He says he won't give them up even though the company that makes them is getting out of business. His name is Ryu, 53, collected nearly 90 devices. What do you mean he won't give up? He's, over he's 23 years. No, no, he won't give them up. <laughs> he started using LG phones because he liked their design and creative functions, but the audio quality made him fall in love. Oh. That was one of the things they hung on to longer than others. They put a DAC right in it. Oh, right. Uh, so this is his pile of devices, I guess. Oh, no, this is just a bunch of phones. Oh, no, that's him, man. 53 years old. Ryu Hyun Su. 53. Oh, wow. And he's got every... L oh, he spelled LG. Click on the next one. Oh. Couple points. Yeah. Couple points for such a thing. Hey, so do, do the Nexus devices count in his collection? Because LG made the Nexus devices. I bet they? you. Yeah, I, yeah. I, see, I see one right there. So he's including the Nexus. I, I have see. one of those in my drawer. I, I hope see I should one. send it to him. I see one. <laughs> Do you? Where? Never mind. <laughs> here's, this, here's another quote. Uh, I think they were rushing to catch up with Samsung, sacrificing the quality. And to cover up the issue, the other company was focusing too much on the design and other functions. And that led to repeat problems. He was confident with his plan to use LG phones forever. And he will buy parts online. It's easy to replace parts when you practice a little. So he's deep into it. Yeah. He's got a workstation, like a like a setup. Look at the look at the thing hanging on the door. Oh, wow. How he organizes them in those little slots. I don't think that was originally made for that. And look at the look at all the gear he's got, the glue guns and the heat guns and I think he's like refurbing his own phones, this, extending the life. Mm. It's like it's like a collector, like a car collector. Mm. Refurbish or uh Restore the mm -hmm. classics. Yeah, maybe know. this will be worth something, like quite a lot of money someday. The South Korean phone maniac. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what it says. Uh, Tesla Cybertruck paid a visit to Ooh. the Gigafactory in, in Texas, and Elon Musk was behind the wheel. Imagine rolling up like that. Like, they're building the Gigafactory in the background. It's got all the workers. Look at all the yellow vests. It's like, hey, everyone. You just roll up real quick and all the look, all the phones come out. Everybody's recording it. These guys, Bezos yesterday with the rocket in front of the rocket, and now Elon's tooting around in this thing. That's right. That's what a it's billionaire stuff. Yeah. And, but this they're actually gonna make, and what's cool about this one is uh anybody can buy it. Unlike that rocket, mm. a little more complex. Anybody can have a cyber truck. And no matter how many times we see it, it's still it doesn't seem real. I think there's going to be a difference when we see it in real life. You, you got know? one coming. Do I? You tell me. I'm. I, I ordered the the Model S, Model S Plaid, Plaid. and that was. And where's that? So it's in the mail. If, if I put a deposit yeah. on the Cybertruck, I don't think it's healthy to even imagine a date because then you'd be mm -hmm. like, "Hey, where's my Cyber?" Because it's. I don't think it's any time soon. I mean, they're building a factory. So I shouldn't be so down on it, but mm -hmm. as per Elon Musk, he actually drove around the Giga Texas complex behind the wheel of Cybertruck. Other photos of the visit show Musk addressing a crowd of, at Giga Texas, many of whom seem to be drawn to the massive all-electric pickup. Well, yeah, you would be, especially, would, if, yeah. especially if you're going to eventually manufacture it. So it's a good entrance. I love that truck. Oh, there's a little video at the bottom, a little Snapchat video. Someone says, it already looks like Mars. Well, he happened to be driving across this uh, sand, this reddish colored sand. All right, let's check it out. Next one down. There you go. What do you say? Is that Mars now? Cool. Are we on Mars now? 
Can we talk about this camera work here? What is that? This is worse than that Apple Pencil video. That no, no, watched. that's it's dynamic, Kirk. You don't know how to Snapchat. <laughs> no, man. You this don't is know. cinematography. It's you a Dutch angle, know. and then he's ro he rotates it to yeah, be no, no. Where you never horizontal you never heard of Snapchat. You're 47 <laughs> years all, old, so Snapchat. It's 2021 over here. Chat Snap. Uh, here's what some early users think of SpaceX's Starlink satellite internet. They're going to tell us about the speed and more. Oh, Aren't okay. you excited? This yeah, I'm curious to know. Space internet, man. Dream come true. Mm -hmm. There's 10,000 users, rolled out to 10,000 users in the first few months. CNBC spoke to more than 50 people who have been using Starlink. Surveyed households in Canada, California, Colorado, Idaho, Iowa, Maine, Michigan. That looks like it's out there. That Minnesota, community? Montana. Mm -hmm. Rural. Ohio, space, Oregon, rural, Washington, that's far out, Wisconsin, maybe it's in the north, and Wyoming, there you go, here's what some people said, I expect to keep the service long term, that's a user in Montana, the price of the beta for the service is more reasonable than any other option we have. And those are worse in performance. I will keep Starlink as long as it's the only broadband option available to me. Wow. Uh, this could be nice in cottage country up there. Right up there. <laughs> right? Because you, you have some situations over there with some pretty trash connections. Mm -hmm. uh, they're still in beta. The Better for Nothing beta program service price at $99 a month in the U.S. with the four ninety nine upfront cost for the equipment, and that's all it needs, right? Like this little it, satellite man. dish thing. It's a, yeah, man, it's a tiny little cool, tiny little dish you put over there. You ever right get concerned? On. Either you guys are concerned about how much stuff is in space. Yeah, the space junk. Yes. Yeah. How many satellites are we throwing up there now? Well, actually, that's one of the things Bezos and Elon are beefing about. They're beefing about it. Yeah, they're yeah. beefing. You got it. It's are all they about one builds battles? too high, yeah. one builds low. It's all then, about uh, altitude. Yeah. When do they start rap battling each other? Because you know Elon has the the, the electronic music career. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when does Bezos drop? Would it a be Would it be a bars rap on? battle or would it be a boxing match? Because that's what everyone is oh, doing Bezos these days. Is gonna take it for sure. Yeah, Bezos was See looking beast yesterday. Yeah. He's looking yoked. I feel like Elon with is a bigger dude, <laughs> though, with his hat. <laughs> I feel like he, he might be, have some size on him, some reach. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. How, how tall is Elon, I wonder? We were doing uh, this the other I day. Feel with, like he, uh, I feel like Askren he's, and, I feel uh, like he's yeah, he's a little more than six feet. Okay, six and a bit. Six foot one. And let's get a quick Bezos. Yeah, um, see, you got okay, some reach here. Now let's see a picture of Bezos' biceps, though. In in in, wait a sec. Can we he's just get pumped. his height and feet, please? He's just pumped. type in feet. He's yeah, gonna yeah. be like five foot eleven, five foot ten, five seven. Oh wow, five yeah, seven. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he's gonna be a lot smaller than Elon. Elon six one. Even if he's say? in great shape, six two. Okay. No, it said the other one said six. Oh, look at that one, six one and a half. Wait, people wait. get real specific about Elon. <laughs> Elon's forty nine. What's Bezos? He's in there. Same, same. He's it, he's around there. It could be a tilt. It could be a Donny Brook. Yeah, it could be a regular. I'm taking the bigger guy. I'm taking yeah. the bigger guy. I might go Bezos. He looks like he's in fighting shape. From the from at least from the rocket. I know, pick we but saw it's yesterday. just the, the reach problem. It is a problem. It is a problem. He's got the hair, or less no hair. So he's, he's got more dynamic. He's, he's gonna he's, he's right. gonna he's gonna move through space more. <laughs> he's slippery. efficiently. He's yeah. wiry. Yeah, it'd be a, it'd be a tilt. Anyway, neither of these guys are gonna risk their brains for something like this. So they don't go. Rap they out. don't need the money. They don't it. need the money. But what would the viewership be? A money fight. Bezos versus Elon boxing match. Does the whole world just watch that? Everybody the, just the stops. A, the aliens tune in too, dude. Right. Yeah. And the winner will fight another billionaire. Yeah, but what we don't <laughs> like have Jack any. Jack Ma or something. <laughs> Bill Gates. Bill no, Gates, Bill's, yeah. Bill's not in. Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg versus Dorsey. What if he did it to Ooh. save the world? The other one is social watch, media though. is Zuckerberg oh, Dorsey. That's a clash good of the call. Social media. The thing, the thing, about these, the thing about these fights is they got to be even. 
Yes. You got to yeah. find the right matchup. Mm -hmm. Like that's what's interesting about the upcoming Jake Paul fight. Is that this weekend, by the way? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so on trailer, we were talking about this. The other well, day. it's just, it's just, I, and I think the odds are still in his favor. Whose favor? Jake Paul's, right? That's what we were saying, yeah. No, 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 no. I'm saying like actual Vegas odds. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, you are I right. I feel like yes, we looked it are. up. Yeah, and, by a bit, by a bit. And here you have a guy who's an MMA fighter in Ben Askren who mm -hmm. has a, I mean, a lot of guys have tried to punch him. Some successfully, others, now obviously in an MMA fight, it's a different story because it's going to be hard to hit him because he's not going to be wanting to stand there. In yeah. most cases, he's a grappler. But... The key with this is, like, let's say, so Jake Paul was talking about wanting to fight a real fighter, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Well, who was his last fight? But, but, like, okay, let's just compare Logan Paul, Floyd Mayweather to Jake Paul, Ben Askren. Like, which is actually a more interesting matchup? Never mind the profile or the popularity just which are you less? You can't, you can't ignore, ignore that though. What? The popularity. No, 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 no. I'm just saying what happens in the ring. Which one is tougher to predict? If you had to put a winning bet, a guaranteed winning bet on either one of those fights, which oh, is the, the hardest decision to make? The hardest bet. In other Jake words, Jake Paul versus Askren is the harder one to figure out. May that's what I think. Mayweather just cleans his clock. Maybe not cleans his clock, but he's obviously he's not getting hit and yeah. Yeah. he's moving around. Well, how big is Logan Paul? Logan he's Paul. Huge. That, yeah, he's, that he's was the large, that was right? the issue there. That yeah, was the issue yeah. there. But but still, how do you not but bet it's, on Mayweather? It's footwork and it's I'm not for the record, I'm not saying I'm not betting. I'm just saying the way that it happens in your brain yeah. is pretty obvious. It you makes can more sense. see it. Yep. Yep. This can, one is squirrely. Jake versus Askren. I, I'm trying to see it in my head. Who's moving in? Who's moving out? It's squirrely, man. Who's yeah. throwing yeah. what? Uh, how long does it go? Uh, who's? Hey, anything can happen, and that's the beauty of the thing, right? That's the whole reason why yeah. everyone's yeah. going to tune there's in. Well, more, anyway, there's more wonder. Exactly. You know, and 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 the more like uh, the more successful executions we see of these YouTube crossover boxing matches, the more you realize that the entertainment value is in the match mm -hmm. and less so in necessarily. And, and by the way, I'm taking nothing away from the best people in the world that actually do this mm -hmm. because in a weird way, they probably do deserve more interest than they currently have. But as we saw in MMA with McGregor and others, the marketing component celebrity just the investment that people have once they find themselves having a connection with the individual involved mm -hmm. just is just rocket fuel that's just gasoline on these things but you have to have the matchup you have to have a matchup that's intriguing i think this one is very intriguing and actually I know Will's super like psyched about this fight. So, Will, who do you think is going to win this one that we're talking about right now? Mm. Uh, I think uh, Jake Paul, to Ooh. be honest. <laughs> Lou, what do you or say? a knockout. What do you say? A oh, knockout. Like an early knockout. An early oh, Jake Paul knockout. I hate Ooh. to say it, but. It's totally All possible. Right. It's totally possible. He can punch. It's totally possible. Yeah. What do you think, Lou? Uh, the only thing I will say is... Askren has obviously shared space with guys who can throw punches. Mm -hmm. And he hasn't... Now, again, I haven't watched all of his fights, and, and obviously he could shoot, and he was a threat for other reasons, so people would be striking differently. Mm -hmm. But I just... I'm, I'm curious about what his chin can do because then more cardio comes into play and stuff later on but he's also an older individual he's on a I, skid too i right? feel like he hasn't had action in a while yeah he's so, not a boxer he, he's not a boxer but you know yeah. he's he, he's been doing a good uh, uh pre-game of the marketing he, mm -hmm. I, I saw some of some of the videos he made yeah yeah they yeah, were yeah, pretty yeah. Funny. yeah, like yeah, he, yeah, yeah. i mean he's going he's up on social media and we were saying Paul. and we were saying this as well he's holding his own discussing the topic how who has more to lose like in a weird way, definitely Jake Paul. Yeah, I agree. Askren gets a big time payday. He wasn't doing anything else, as no, far as I know. I mean, maybe yeah. as a podcast, I'm not. I'm sure he's doing things, but 
it's a win. It's kind of a win-win for him. He's in front of so many more people than. Yeah. Yeah. How could it go down worse than the Masvidal fight? How could anything like that's his highlight reel? You know, how could it, how could Jake Paul top that for uh, the fight? But and, and and weirdly, even if he does, I'm still saying I think there's a lot of people that take that opportunity regardless. Oh yeah, I'm with you 100 percent in that position. Yeah. Um, like of all the people that could have been selected, of all the people, there's a pretty big pool of former MMA fighters that would jump in there and get, and get paid. Mm-hmm. It's a fairly large pool. Mm-hmm. However, on a on a YouTube boxing scene, there's a couple names that have emerged as the ones that are going to pull some eyeballs, and and this is obviously one of those names. Would you watch uh, McGregor and Jake Paul? I'd watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure a good matchup right uh, that one is not as that or, one uh, the outcome there seems more obvious to me <laughs> just, I, yeah. I'm, I mean i'm just he has a little bit of size but it, yeah yeah that will come there seems more okay. obvious to me yeah in terms of mcgregor i'm saying yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. okay yeah yeah mm-hmm. But who knows, man? This stuff is all out of control. What even is this now? You got Dana White speaking on it. Like, what? what is what? Is what? Yeah. Hey, every one of these fights brings us a little bit closer to the p- possibility that Elon Musk will box against Jeff Bezos. <laughs> so I'm for it. I'm not sure we even, as a society, necessarily <laughs> want that to happen. I want to see it. I'm not necessarily sure we want these individuals who employ a ton of people. In space. Uh, potentially being oh, having life altering <laughs> damage <laughs> no footwork they blast themselves. off on their yeah. rockets they go on a yeah. spacewalk and duke it you know yeah. okay what do you think does more views bezos elon musk right now or around the election biden trump Ooh. <laughs> I, I think yeah, a, that's, uh, you're talking like November, like the first. Let's just say I'm it. just curious globally, I, like which one man. actually does bigger numbers. Better fight is definitely Bezos and Elon, but bigger numbers. I got to go with you on on Trump and uh, Biden. Biden. What would you watch though? I'd watch them both, but I would definitely. <laughs> no, no, he's saying you got to pick, pick one. one. Oh, one or the other. Mm-hmm. Me personally, I'd rather see Elon Bezos. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. Will's Will's conflicted. Elon. I, go for the, I go for the other. Biden and Trump. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lou, Lou, finish it. You got the deciding vote. Here. Honestly, I can't I can't pick that one as much as No, actually, you know, I can't. Yeah, because it's kind of sad. It I, is yeah, sad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm just thinking about the health and it'd be sad so fast. First round sadness. Yeah. 30 seconds sadness. No, I think the only listen, the only reason you're bring I'm bringing it up is I'm not trying to make a joke about like older guys but I don't plan I don't want to do that either. Yes. It was it was more a question of popularity level because it was just mm. around uh, the, the some of the view counts on the, some of those debates. Like what is a debate anyway? Crazy. And and the level to which people care about it, are so passionate about it is more but then again, Elon fans are out of control. Mhm. So it's a good point about the debates because the way you talk about a debate is the, very similar to the way you would talk about like an armchair MMA fight. Absolutely, you know? yeah. You'd be like, they, oh, you know, in that question, he wasn't aggressive enough or he's being too defensive. He's not going on the offense enough. It's, it's, it's oddly, it's eerily similar. Yeah, people, people love those type of parameters. People love a contest and a clear, they want a clear winner and loser. And that's one of the problems with the debate is it's, it then gets disputed, and then Fox News says this guy won, and then and then CNN says, "Yeah, the thing, the pe- reason people love the fight is because it's a whole, it's, definitive. it's a whole lot of talking, yeah. essentially the verbal debate, and then the settlement that takes place." But the the winner of visual. the debate is the guy who gets elected president, right? Isn't well, that how it plays out? Well, I'm just talking more about the analysis immediately after the debate. I'm, I see. Right. You right. can't Your feeling it. when you turn it off. It's like weird. when you turn off the fight, it's like, well, mm. that happened. In most yeah. cases, there are some controversial finishes and judgments yeah. and things yeah. like this, but in most cases. So how about these Starlink uh, dishes? Eh? Yeah, people oh, love what it. What are we doing People love place? it. People love them. We're in the weeds. People love them. Yeah. Uh, here's a weird, a weird, weird little car that GM... I guess is involved in a $4,400 electric convertible, the Hong Guang Mini, the best selling electric car in China. 
<laughs> well, you're teasing us here with this. Oh, we got it. <laughs> we'll, oh, we'll got a commercial. We got right it when we scroll. <laughs> you guys just scroll further. Don't even worry about one, it. Right? Is that it? So, so the... no, that's it. That's the regular version. Okay. That's the best-selling electric car in China. This wow. is the one? Yeah, but they, oh. they're doing a convertible. That's the funny-looking one. If you go down, scroll to the next. The funny-looking No, I mean, like, you never saw a convertible that small before, have you? <laughs> this thing looks like it's from Thomas the Tank Engine or yeah, something. It doesn't man. seem real. That's insane. I love the way cars are looking cute. these days. It's like, uh, yeah. The Hong <laughs> Guang. Really nothing to say about it. It's a cartoon it. character. Yeah. It looks like, like a bubble tea mascot or something. It's like a caricature of a, a cartoon thing. Mini EV Cabrio convertible set to make its debut at the Auto Shanghai show next week. Go to the next picture down. It's super cartoon. Is what am I looking at? Here? <laughs> what am yeah. I looking at here? It's some type of render, obviously. Yeah, it's not physically there. They haven't debuted it, so we're looking at. Okay, that looks. That looks wow, nice. look at the interior. It looks mm -hmm. roomy. Yeah, uh, technical details have not been released, but the hard top model is ten feet long. Has a range of 106 miles per charge and can reach a top speed of 62 miles per hour. Um, yeah, it is. A lot of crazy stuff is happening in automotive. And this is another example of that. As a consumer tastes change and, and you're appealing to a variety of different markets, I mean, it'd be nice to park that thing. Yeah. <laughs> it'd be easy to park it. Hmm. Yeah, the lines are getting blurred with all of the electric bikes. I, I know electric bikes, like off-roading electric bikes are a big thing. And it's like, where does it start becoming a dirt bike? When does it start becoming a car? Where right. does this where does this start becoming a go kart? Particularly when you start talking about efficiency. Once you get everybody all hyped up about efficiency, mm -hmm. now people are thinking about scale. Like, what do I really need to take with me on this commute? Do I need to ha have all this extra cargo space? No. Yeah, we just gotta take my body there. Willie do was he was hoping he was gonna bike back and forth to with the electric bike oh, to here. Yeah, but yeah. he's got Otis and then so that kind of screwed it up. But oh. he would save some money. He would save some money if yeah. he did that. Yeah. If it, and the environment. You would save the world, too. Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> I will, eventually. How? I mean, I'll put him in a basket. Wow, I got to see that. You are like actually... A I, need a render, I need a render of that. You are actually yeah. going to put Otis in a basket and commute here. Like E.T., man. Just like wow. E.T. Maybe like once a week. <laughs> you are going to become know? a local <laughs> meme. Sure. <laughs> basket boy. <laughs> Yo, you all should. the guys in the all the guys in the Tim Hortons like they're scooter man. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, no. You should you should put a Starlink satellite on there too. Oh yeah. wow! <laughs> wow. Right on my head. <laughs> all I right, here's that. the other end of the spectrum. Ferrari CEO has promised an electric vehicle in 2025. There was resistance yeah. uh, amongst these historic uh, supercar or uh, sports car companies. They have done hybrid stuff in the past, some very, very fast hybrid vehicles, but there's a bit been just, maybe it's not resistance, but maybe it's just uh, part of the process. When sure. you have the, the, the brand that Ferrari has, that you've been doing things a, a certain way meticulously for a period of time, you're not going to want to jump in right away. Ferrari has, uh, will unveil the first all electric Ferrari in 2025. Even after the company confirms a new CEO over the past decade, execs have said Ferrari will never build an EV. So this, this is a bit of a shift. Mm. Uh, here we have some quotations, some quotes. We are continuing to execute our electrification strategy in a highly disciplined way. And our interpretation and application of these technologies, both in motorsport and road cars, is a huge opportunity to bring the uniqueness and passion of Ferrari to new generations. They're right. I'll tell you what, they're right. Now, this is not exactly the same example as what happened with Porsche, but the Taycan has outsold 911s globally. Hmm. Is that right? That's right. So it goes to show you that when you take a prestigious brand and you bring performance, but you also update it and electrify it, that there's a market for it. And I don't doubt that when, when Ferrari does an electric supercar, an electric Ferrari, they, that thing is going to be incredibly popular. Now, mm -hmm. I don't know how many units they're going to make. You know, a lot of this stuff, like I said, is meticulous. It's not an automated process for manufacturing. So it's going to have to have a hefty price tag 
but you know people are going to be lining up for that thing. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Uh, visualizing the most used languages on the internet. Don't scroll down yet. This is a, you know, I love these type of infograph type things. Hmm. And this is something curious to me because, especially because I analyze it on the YouTube channel, different people that watch from different countries. Hmm. And I got to say, I'm a bit skeptical actually of this list. Once you, once you do scroll down, I'm going to just say it right away. The number one most used language on the internet is English. Now go ahead and guess your number two. <clears throat> or just take a deep breath and clear your throat. Uh, number two. Language on the internet. What do you think? I don't know. Based on people, Chinese, like Mandarin. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with, I don't know if it's the, if you call the written form of it Hindi, but I'm going to go with Hindi. Yeah, he's going Hindi. Uh, according to this, it's Russian. Whoa. And Chinese doesn't show up until number 10, and Hindi's not even in the top 10. Whoa. So <laughs> I'm like, I'm very confused hmm. about, about this particular study. And I presume... That part of the reason is that the analysis was maybe around certain websites that are more directed at specific languages. Because it says here, here's a look at the top 20 most used languages on the internet compared to their real world use among the global population. And it also says, oh yeah, English is the most common language online used by 60% of the top 10 million websites. So... What's weird to me is that list of websites is key here in how you're going to run your analysis as far as which websites constitute. Do you know what I'm, what I'm trying to say here? Yeah, like, yeah. You know, what exactly are the, the to top say. 10 million websites, I guess, for global They're traffic? Probably all English. English is the language, unofficial language of the internet. But right? maybe it's just more a time thing that there's been more accumulation of English websites because yeah. of mm -hmm. adoption of the internet and the pace. Mm -hmm. And it, but anyway, it, it's still it's interesting nonetheless. I, I'm sure somebody's gonna want to take a deeper look into it. But what is cool is seeing the relationship of internet percentage. For the top 10 million websites versus the share of the speaking population globally in the in the real world. So in the, in the case of English, you see 60.4% of the top 10 million websites are English. But the share of global speaking that is actually English is only 60, 16%. Oh, I got The you. share of language globally is I only 16%. You. And if you go down to simplified Chinese, you'll see... 1.4% of the top 10 million websites, hmm. but then 14% of the speaking population of the globe. Hmm. And if we go to the next page where you would have, no, two, do you got to go two pages? Oh, Hindi is not even on here, but it's the third most spoken language in the world, but isn't one of the top languages used on the internet compared to everything else. Now this, I should just say, one of the reasons I'm skeptical or curious about how the data was accumulated uh, is because of our YouTube analytics, hmm. right? Now, I have increasingly seen viewership in places like India, Indonesia, Vietnam, Philippines. These are the major growth regions for us, and India at the very top of that. And not, I'm, I'm sure it's not just for us, but YouTube in general. And you're seeing some pretty significant percentages, and... I presume those individuals speak both English and Hindi because our videos are in English. Mm -hmm. So it is, I'm, I'm quite curious about how that's not on this list. Yeah, well, you bring up a really good point about the accumulation of the 10 million websites and what they're counting as language use. Like if someone was to go on Facebook, like a, a Russian speaker, let's say, was to go on Facebook and post in English... Does that count as a use of language on the internet? Or are they right. talking about articles, news articles that are written and published in English? 
it can get kind of fuzzy, I think. Yeah. But it's very interesting. I, I would not have guessed Russian number two. Yeah, it, it is it is it is kind of what you said too about how English could be a second language for a lot of people. I'm sure tons of Hindi uh, internet users and and watchers who watch Lou yeah. and Box Therapy yeah. are watching tons of stuff in Hindi in, and in English. In English, but they also speak. It's very, yeah, it's very it's interesting. It's a great way to practice too, you know, going on a forum and reading a language you want to learn and trying to reply in that mm -hmm. language or watching video content in another language with like closed captions on. Yeah. Some other uh, interesting ones below Russian, you have Spanish, Turkish, Persian, French, German, Japanese, Vietnamese. Uh, that's the top nine. And then simplified Chinese at number 10. Didn't expect to see Russian in second. However, it is important to note Russian is obviously spoken outside of Russia, including in, in inside of countries that used to be a part of it. So mm -hmm. uh, I, th I thought it was interesting anyway. Very interesting. Uh, what's this one? To become queen, these ants fight and then shrink their brains. <laughs> Female nice. Indian jumping ants that lose their bids for the crown can regrow their brains. A feat that has never been seen before in insects. That's nuts. First of all, ants. Jumping ants, no less. First of all, ants. Incredible. Fight mm. to the top, mm -hmm. yeah. Just, Crazy. Just the coordination and or, or, organization. Oh, I thought you were talking about the movie Ants. <laughs> Still, it's still a pretty good movie. Oh boy. Oh boy. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I, I saw Willie do. He's getting worried. Willie's <laughs> fixing himself in a chair. Don't you dare get out of here. Oh, actually. Actually. Uh -oh. Can we go through uh -oh. this uh, uh -oh. article? Actually. No, I'm, I'm interested in what's happening right now. Actually. What is happening? He's singing. Will he do? Singing, yeah. Oh, yes. He's, He's about to take over the show today. Yes, I know it's happening. Most anticipated moment, Unbox Therapy history. I was hyped all morning for this. He, Will he do, has solved the biggest problems in the world. Mm -hmm. In I, general, I that's normally it. what he does. He solves problems. But today... He took it to another level because we've all been talking about this Apple car and how tough it's been for Apple as a company. Figure out who to partner with, figure out what it should look like. We've seen concepts floating around. Yeah. But nothing, nothing has lived up to our expectations. Nothing no. has been good enough for that badge to be that autonomous electric vehicle from Apple. Mm, mm. That is until today. Because Willie Dude took it upon himself to solve the world's problems once again. To take care of Tim Cook. To provide him with the right design yeah. for the most important Apple product possibly ever. We gotta finish this ant story real quick. <laughs> oh, no! You can't do that to the people, man. <laughs> no, I was dying. I need to see this. Most ant species are born oh, into royalty, really but for Indian jumping wow. ants, female workers can fight for the crown. The catch, the winner becomes queen, but its brain also shrinks. That is so weird. Why does the brain have to shrink? Indian jumping ants are particularly unique. They shed a part of their brain mass to conserve energy and push resources from the brain to the ovaries. Wow. wow. Moving moving resources around? They're shifting the power. Oh, baby. That's crazy. The lifespan of most ant colonies is often dependent on the lifespan of the queen. How about having a queen and all that? And everybody's working. Jobs. Stop. Doing your jobs. Incredible. The For the colony. Queen. Yeah, that's what nuts. do they look like? They're bigger, right? They're large, yeah. Hmm. So, they how do you not become a queen? You're like eligible to be a queen, and then you don't become the queen, and then you're like, well, I'm gonna get in the stem anyway, so I need that brain power. Like, how do you not become the queen? Is it a fight? Is it an election? Uh, <laughs> you're asking some. Really good questions here. <laughs> Are you asking me or Will? Who I'm, are you asking? Just, I'm just floating it out there. Yeah. What do you guys think? 
I'm just reading here. This is uh, the old queen choose a new queen. How does uh, it go? I, we need some ant. Hundreds people. of female workers duel each other. They begin to undergo a physiological change that transforms them into queen-like workers called Whoa. gamer gates. Gamer Whoa. gates. <laughs> what? <laughs> Not the online harassment campaign. <laughs> A small group of eight to ten workers will emerge victorious while the losers will return Ooh. to their worker duties. Are we talking about a royal rumble? The victors will then activate their ovaries to take on the previous role of the queen. <laughs> ovaries activated. <laughs> during this period, the, the ovaries switch, yeah. during this period, the ovaries of gamer gates will increase five times in size while their brains will shrink up to twenty five percent. Oh wow. Compared to the anatomy of the workers. That's a good return on investment though. 25% reduction of brain power, five times cranking up on the ovary production. Wild stuff, man. And you can't turn it back, right? No, they can. When they lose, they, they do, turn yeah. it back. No, oh, yeah. Okay. Then afterwards, they grow the brain back when they, they just, need it. They get smarter. Yeah. All right, I got one more story. Lab-grown embryos mix human and monkey cells. Oh, I like this. Researchers have been inserting human stem cells into the embryos of other mammals in hopes of growing replacement organs for transplant. Scientists now describe the first so-called chimeras made by introducing human stem cells into monkey embryos. The researchers found that some of the embryos retained the human cells, which integrated with monkey cells and began to differentiate. The embryos turned on or turned up several molecular pathways, possibly providing clues about how to improve the procedures for growing organs in animals that would be good donors, such as pigs. Yeah, I'm talking about you need an organ transplant, and it was grown in a pig. It's human, but grown in a pig. That kidney or whatever it is you need. Would you take it? The chimeras do not raise new ethical issues, bioethicists say, because they didn't develop for long enough to acquire a nervous system. Okay, I I'm with that, but would you Science. take it? Would you take Science. It? I mean, when you're in a pinch, dude... I'll tell you what, uh, you hear about people that are on donor lists for ages and it could be life or death. I think you might give it a shot. Roll the dice on it. Yeah. I think you might give it a shot. Anyway, uh, I just put that in there. I feel like people need to know the chimera thing is real. I like that Human word Human hybrids. Too, chimera. That's from Far Cry? Is it? Is I was it? playing some video game and the enemies were yeah, chimeras. Like chimera. Oh, wow. Hmm. It's a type of, it was, I don't remember what the hybrid was in that game, but... Maybe that, it might not have been Far Cry. There's some game with chimeras. Oh, crap. Now we got to look it up because people are shouting and screaming <laughs> at the... Tons of games have chimeras. Chimeras yeah, is just a, a Oh, wait. No, term. it was a PlayStation game. Kill something. Kill Zone? Oh, I remember Kill Zone. That was the PS4 launch title. Chimera Kill Zone? Am I nuts? weapon or is that a animal? <sighs> Well, I thought a chimera Ooh. was like a mix on, between two video animals. game no, villain. It's too general. Chimera. No, it's not too general, dude. I'm gonna get this so much faster. Do than you. chimera follow? Here, there, resistance. The chimera, the main antagonist mm. in the game and other franchises in resistance. Come oh. on, Willie, dude. Come on, Willie, dude. You don't think I can Google something, man? Wow. I'm telling you, man, it's real. It's right wow, look there. Look at that thing. That looks like a monkey human. Yeah, I had the game. I had the game wrong. Resistance, fall of man. Was the game? Oh, okay. Well, I was killing. I was just those. focused on the kill that you're talking about. The I kill. Was, like, that was, was a, that kill was zone. a game. There was a game. Kill yeah. zone. Yeah. yeah. Kill zone was alright. The Chimera are the main antagonists in the game and other franchises in Resistance. They are parasitic alien species. They were originally suspected to be biological weapons developed by the Russians because their invasion started in Russia. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's scary. Go kill some Chimera if you like, but don't go anywhere. Don't do that yet because. Oh. As I mentioned, this Here is the go. moment that you've all been waiting for. Here we go. It's tough. Well, are you going to stay it's so tough you for can me. Uh, talk about it? It's tough for me you know, to I even... Need a critique here. It's tough for me to even get this out there because of how big of a deal it is and the fact that I've got all this responsibility to set this up correctly. And I know I gave the preamble previously, but I still feel the amount of significance here probably... I probably haven't even scratched the surface. The amount of significance. This here. is bigger than it's the like fight on Saturday. Many this layers. moment right here. This should be pay per view. Than, as far than as I'm concerned. No, it's bigger than Bezos Musk. It is bigger than Bezos Musk. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's the just, collaboration of the millennium. He just made the Apple car. So, for those of you that don't know, Willie Do is a high level designer, product designer, uh, illustrator, uh, artist, web developer. Uh, Unsigned. 
aficionado of many yeah. categories. I mean, we don't have to, we can't even, there's not enough time to get into all of it. Um, and he heard about the problem and he said, you know what? He looked me square in the eye. He said, you know what? I'm going to take, I'm going to take a crack at it. He looked me square in the eye. Well, yeah, you know, I tried. said, I'm going to take a shot at it. And so, uh, without further. Well, are you going to stay? Without any, it, without any you know? uh, further hesitation. You got to stay here, bud. He'll stay. Without any further hesitation, ladies and gentlemen, Willie Dews, Apple car. Oh. Uh, okay, well, first I want to take you back to uh, the concept images here. Kirk, you would have some uh, feedback looks, too, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. so this was uh, some of the concepts we talked about here. There's uh, When was this? When did you talk about this? I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, I would say. Okay. Yeah, just like news about the Apple car. There's a bubbly one. That's kind of nice. And some other ones here. Oh, look at that one with the little face on it. Which one would you choose? There's something about so the one five. on the left that's like so opaque and, and alien-like that I kind of think it's cool. It, it, it's like, uh, is okay. anyone really in there? Well, yeah, I think you're on the right track. because This I, inspired uh, you? Yeah. For sure. Okay, so are you ready? Well, tell us what you liked but, about this first. Well, it looks so universal. Wait a second. Right? Wait a uh, second. What? This is the one you ba you based yours on this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Yeah. It looked universal? Yeah, because I would think an Apple car looking cool wouldn't be the main thing. Mm -hmm. I would say it would be uh, really generalized. It would be really safe. Mm -hmm. For everyone. This, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a good insight on this. It does look very good. So are you ready? Are I'm you not. ready for the spectacle here? Yes. Let's do it. Okay. Here it is. Hey! This is my drawing. My rendition wow. of uh, the new Apple car. Is that all glass on the top? Is, yes. Is it's that glass two point dome. perspective? That's two point perspective. Well, it's 3D. Yeah. Yeah, that's two point perspective. That's a good well, illustration, right? Yeah, there. It's yeah. A good point. yeah. I yeah. mean, the car, the car is nice, but the guy is. I mean, that's uh, yeah, a really trim figure. Okay, so ex so explain this to us. Is that it's it's a it's a glass dome on the top. That's, yeah, that yeah, is yeah. very oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm what, telling you. Jetsons. Mm, yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's gotta look bubbly. To me, I'm it a, can't look cool. It's got to look like super friendly. I'm <laughs> you know curious I mean? about. I'm curious about uh, crash testing this. <laughs> no, no, you don't. You don't need to do that. <laughs> right. Is there any it technology? Because everyone has is there an any Apple collision technology that you've worked in? Because um, it looks well, like you're flying straight through. It's the uh, it's reinforced with uh, Gorilla Glass Ten. Oh, okay. So, right. Yeah, I mean, everywhere. there you go. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, I think you're the right. Full Will, recline if you go far enough in the future, it's they're so smart that the collisions are a thing of the past. I'm telling you, they, oh, you I'm telling. They're you. all autonomous and interacting it's with one another, yeah. and they never crash. I say you can't crash it. You try to crash it, yeah. you can't crash it. Wow. Yeah, yeah, man. Simple forms, you know. It's all good. So there is this go. a two seater or a four seater? I haven't decided yet. Oh. <laughs> Still working on it. Is but the, th it looks like a two seater, no? Yeah, well, Maybe right now. Maybe with a lot of trunk space. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I feel like you have enough room if you do want to put a, a rear yeah. seat. Yeah, yeah. What I'm really curious about right now is the guy, is that you? Uh, No, that's Johnny Ives. Oh, okay, Johnny oh, yeah. Ives. Oh. And what is he holding on to? An iPhone. Okay. Uh, of course, yeah. 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 Well, go. he looks like charmed to be wow. in the presence of this car. This is incredible. Yeah. This is a this is quite it's, a moment. It's the next generation. It's quite a moment. I am uh, forever grateful. Yes. That you allowed us to take part in this mm -hmm. momentous occasion. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Because uh I don't know about you, Kirk, but I'll always remember where I was. What is on 16th of April. 508. When the Apple car was created. Tim Cook, call me. <laughs>